Hi there, I'm clinical psychologist, Dr. Danny Martinez, and these are five ways your brain changed during the coronavirus. Cognitive changes from the real world to the virtual world. We're noticing cognitive changes in the way we think, we learn, we work, we play and socialize. And we're starting to feel the impact of that. And most of our cognitive routines have actually changed and your day to day today might look really different from what it used to. Your daily commute in the car or using cash or maybe stopping at Target. So many of our routines have just changed and our brains feel the impact of that. Even speaking with customer service is easier these days over the phone or maybe over text or a virtual chat, especially for those of us who have lost some ability to act normal in social situations. Here you go, enjoy your coffee, sir. Thank you, you too. Adapting to a more virtual way of living is stretching some of us to our cognitive limits. Improved performance. Although cognitive challenges are stretching us, some of you might actually have experienced improvements in those areas. Some of you have learning styles that were never comfortable in traditional settings to begin with, like lecture style classroom or PowerPoint heavy in-person meetings. You may have found yourself daydreaming all the time or just not being able to focus when someone was speaking to you from the podium. And you slowly started to realize that you were a lot more comfortable in these new settings. You're more comfortable answering emails and having a conversation. You're more comfortable not having to engage in small talk or maybe just feeling more comfortable taking needed breaks as you actually need them rather than when you're given them and also going at your own pace rather than having to keep up with the rest of the group. Increased productivity. I think the prevailing thought has always been that folks would work less if they work remotely. We're finding that some folks work way more than they even used to. And I'm not calling you lazy. Doesn't mean you weren't a hard worker to begin with. The thing is folks are having a hard time disconnecting from work because guess what? It's really hard to do that if your work computer is in the bedroom or in the living room. It's hard to ignore those notifications when you hear that ding. Or when your phone tells you that someone liked your comment in one of your team chats. You might even find yourself sitting at your desk for hours through back to back Zoom meeting. And the time you used to spend walking, standing up, walking, chit-chatting between meetings is actually gone now. So many of you actually just go from the meeting straight to your email. You didn't know it, but some of you are working way harder than you used to. Disturbed sleep schedule. Imagine with me a beautiful world without a commute, where you could roll out of bed, get on your computer, log in, and get started. That distance between rest and productivity all of a sudden is really thin. Unfortunately, because of the few boundaries between our workspaces and our living spaces, your sleep hygiene might have gone out the window. For many people, limited space at home actually makes it really difficult to tell what each space is actually for. If your work computer is next to your bed, you might be tempted to take a work call on your bed. Not that I've done it. Or maybe you could just put your laptop on your coffee table get a nice cozy blanket, really kind of like settle in for my presentation. But then you find yourself sitting in the same spot just a few minutes later after work. The biggest problem here is that your brain sometimes can't really tell the difference. So your sleep patterns start to take a hit. You stay up a little bit later, then you wake up a little bit more tired, and you stay up a little bit longer to make sure that you're doing something fun, but then you wake up a little bit more tired in the morning and the cycle goes on and on and on. And the cycle is really hard to break, especially if you're sleep deprived. There's actually something called post-traumatic growth. It's a growth we experience in the presence of stressful things in our lives. That growth that leads us to strength that we didn't even know we had in the first place. We also call that resilience and it's that strength that comes out of nowhere that we didn't know was there. Even if we feel totally depleted, like we have no gas left in the tank, we are somehow capable of digging in there and finding the strength that we need, which even if it doesn't feel like it, is what you're actually doing if you're watching this video. You're doing it. And the best part is that that strength doesn't actually go away. It stays with us. It's like gains at the gym. That strength stays with us and sometimes even makes us think differently and more positively about ourselves. Yeah, I did that. With post-traumatic growth, we acknowledge the bad while remaining open to the good that can come from it. Okay, a couple of takeaways for me. 
One is a reminder that we are not alone in this. Most of us, even if you're experiencing post-traumatic growth and resilience, are struggling through this. And we're experiencing the stress of significant cognitive changes that we've had to make. But all of this makes sense. It's directly in line with what it is to be human. We struggle and fight through adversity. We hold multiple realities, virtual and real, simultaneously. We're able to hold and feel complex feelings and to have the potential for showing resilience in the harshest scenarios. The distance between sleep and productivity is now that distance, that distance between rest and productivity is now really, 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 really. That distance between rest and productivity all of a sudden is now really, 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 really. That distance between sleep and productivity is now gone.